For those of you who have class with me and have questions about APA, specifically about how to cite references, I want to spend a few minutes talking about some of the more common types of references that you'll be asked to include in your academic text. So I want to show some examples. I also want to show how you can go online and find this same information and also check uh, your own references versus the ones that I'm uh, showing here, checking specifically for punctuation, capitalization, spacing, etc. So let's take a look here first. Uh, and for these examples that I want to share with you here today, all I did was I went into a search engine and typed APA 7th edition articles. Now everything that I'm sharing with you here today is related to only APA 7th edition. So do keep that in mind. If you're looking online and you're searching for examples, which I highly recommend that you do, um, make sure that you indicate 7th edition, so not to be confused with 6th edition, as there were some changes uh, in terms of how to reference certain sources. So in this case, I have just used this search term and selected this first option and this will be the first example that we look at here today so today i want to share with you basically one two three four five examples these are of course this is not an extensive list there are many many different types of references and each one is slightly different but these are going to be the most common starting with a peer-reviewed journal article with a doi so most of the newer articles these days will include a DOI. And one of the changes in the seventh edition was that, or is that the DOIs now include a URL. It's a link instead of before just having a, a DOI designation colon and some kind of number. It now is in the form of a URL. So if you're finding exam examples online, just make sure again that you're looking at a 7th edition. Now in this case, notice a couple of things here. I have indented, I've, I'm using the slider bars to offer a, a French indentation or a reverse indentation where the first line is to the left and then all subsequent lines of the same reference are a half an inch over. So again, the slider bars, if you select the text, you can move those and making sure that your ruler is set to inches, making sure that the bottom slider bar is a half inch over and the top bar is all the way to the left. Make sure, of course, you're using one of the accepted uh, fonts for APA. But basically, this is an example. Make sure that you have your authors first, then the year, then the title of the article, the title of or the name of the journal, the volume number, the issue number in parentheses, followed by a comma, then the page numbers, the first page of the article to the last page of the article, period, and then the URL. So what you want to pay close attention to is what is capitalized, for example. Notice that only the first word is capitalized, the title of the article. Of course, proper nouns will always be capitalized. Notice that the name of the journal is in italics, along with the volume number. Notice there's no space between the volume number and the issue number. The issue number is optional. If you have one, you'll include it here in the references. If there is not, uh, if there's not a, an issue number, then you can leave it out. Followed by a comma, then the page numbers, period, and so on. Okay, so this is an example of a journal article with a DOI. Here we have a journal article without a DOI, but from a non-database URL. So if you find an article that's not in one of the databases, we talked uh, in class about using the digital library at the university. I recommend that you use that because it does have a lot of good databases, over 16 databases, in fact, that relate to topics that you're likely going to be uh, interested in. So those will be primarily, those are good examples of a journal article that's coming from a database, which we'll look at here in a moment but if you find if you find a a journal online that's not coming from one of these common databases and this is something that we can verify if you're not sure 
just ask if where you got the article is coming from an established academic research database or not. This is an example of one that does not come from a database, and you'll include the URL. A lot of times the URL is a good indication whether or not it's coming from an academic database because it will indicate the database within the URL. But again, we have the authors, the year, the name of the journal article, and followed by the name of the journal, followed by the volume number, then the issue number, and then the page numbers, the range, the first page of the article to the last page of the article, followed by a URL. Now, the third example is a journal article that does come from a, an academic research database, and in those cases, then you do not need a URL. Everything else basically is the same. Now, here's an example of a book. We have the authors, the year, the name of the book, italicized, and then the publisher. This is another change in the seventh edition. We no longer now need to include the city and the state where the publisher is located, only the publisher, as this example shows, followed by period at the end. Notice that even if a book is found online, that it's not necessary to include the link to that book. Pay close attention to what is italicized, again, the name of the book, and also pay attention to also what is capitalized, or more importantly, what is not capitalized. In this case, only the first word is capitalized. Notice we have an example here of a title and subtitle separated with a colon. So in that case, both the title and subtitle of the first word is capitalized. This will apply also to articles. When you have a title and a subtitle, only the first word of both are capitalized. All right, so our last example here, a book chapter. We have the author of the book chapter followed by the year. Then we have the name of the book chapter. Then we have the word in. Notice what's capitalized. In, first initial, last name. And then we have another first initial, last name. These are the editors. So because we have two editors, in parentheses, we'll have capital E, D, S, period, for editors, plural. If we only have one editor for the book, then in parentheses, we'll have capital E, D, period, to indicate editor singular. And then we'll have a period after the parentheses, followed by the title of the whole book. So this is an example of a book chapter. So we have one book with a lot of chapters, and this is the name of the book that I have highlighted. Notice what's capitalized. Notice what's italicized. The name of the book is italicized. Only the first word is capitalized. Then in parentheses, we have the edition followed by the page PP period, and then the first page of the book chapter to the last page of the book chapter, followed by parentheses or print, and then we have a period, space, and then the editor. We'll have a period at the end to conclude this reference. This is an example of a book chapter. So here we have three different types of articles, a book and a book chapter, there are others you might find for uh, proceedings. Again, what I would suggest that you do is just go online. And any type of reference that you're looking for, simply just do a search. 7th, you can do APA, 7th edition, conference proceedings or proceedings. You're going to find pretty much what you need. You're going to find examples of, of what you need. So a lot of times it'll give you an example outright. A lot of times it'll just give you the sections to include. But pay again, pay very close attention to what's capitalized, what's not, punctuation, spacing, which text is italicized. In all references, you're going to have some text that's italicized. It's just a matter of finding out which, which it is, which text is italicized, which text is not. You can also find examples of Citations. Citations are a little bit more straightforward when you're considering different types of references. Um, but 
I'm not going to go into citations here. I just don't want to stick to reference examples and show you what I would recommend that you do going online, finding these examples, or if this helps by looking at the examples I'm sharing with you here today. These are going to be the most, uh, the most common types. Make sure that in any kind of assignment you, that you're doing, especially if you're writing an academic text, pay close attention to the instructions from your instructor in terms of which types of references that you're expected to use. Especially when it comes to websites. Okay, as a general rule, we want to avoid .com websites. We want to, across the board, avoid dictionaries and encyclopedias. Whether they're online or not, typically we want to avoid those as well when we're writing an academic text. But it's always best to verify uh, that with your instructor when you're asked to complete a writing task, especially when it comes to academic writing. So I hope this helps. And uh, make sure you're reaching out and asking if you need clarification for any of uh, the aspects related to APA, whether it comes to writing citations or references. Remember that every citation should have a reference and every reference should have a citation.